Is it time to delete your ChatGPT subscription? If you code at all, it might be time. GitHub Copilot just released their GitHub Copilot chat feature, which is basically like ChatGPT built directly into your coding window. And today I'm gonna show you how you can get started, how you can install it, and how you can get the most out of it. It's a bit of a learning curve at first, but you'll definitely see some improvements in your ability to code just by having these tools handy. And even if you don't know how to code, this is one of the best times to learn in my opinion. To be honest, I didn't even know how to code maybe a year ago, and now I feel like I'm pretty okay at it. And that's all from just using the chat bots and kind of reverse engineering what they spit out. And now that we have AI built directly into our workflows, you basically have a personal tutor at your site at all times. Let's just get right into it. I wanna bring you over to the GitHub Copilot website here, just kind of showing you what it looks like. You can see we have a ChatGPT-esque window right here on the left, also with our regular coding window on the right. So you can see we can ask for stuff and it prints it right on the side here, which is huge. It even says it's proven to increase productivity by 55%. I don't know about that, but I've definitely been able to code a lot easier with having these tools. I'd say most people nowadays are using some kind of AI tool in their workflow. If you're not, you're really missing out on a productivity performance boost. Yes, you can still code things by hand, but in my opinion, it just makes more sense and is easier to use these kinds of tools. And they have a couple different plans for us to choose from. You can go with the Copilot business plan, which is $19 a month, or you can go with the enterprise plan, which is $39 per month per user. But what we're we're gonna be using is the individual plan here, which is Copilot Individual at only $10 a month or $100 a year. And you even get your first 30 days free with the free trial, which is huge. And also down here, it's free for verified students, teachers, and maintainers of popular open source projects. So if you fall into one of those categories, you might be able to get GitHub Copilot AI for free. GitHub Copilot recently had an update where now it's using ChatGPT4 instead of ChatGPT 3.5 when it's generating responses for your code. I'd say before when I was taking a look at GitHub Copilot. It wasn't that good. It was still good, but it wasn't good enough for me to actually go and purchase it and start using the tool. But now that it's powered by ChatGPT4, I've gotten a lot better results personally. So now that we know what it is, let me show you how to install it and how to start using GitHub Copilot Chat. I'm over on my IDE. I'm going to be using VS Code for this video. You can install VS Code on the VS Code website. Make sure you have the latest version installed. And then we're going to come on over to these boxes here, the extensions tab, and we're going to type in GitHub. And and it should be one of the first ones to come up, GitHub Copilot. We're going to install it here, and that will also install GitHub Copilot chat. If it doesn't, you can install it there. It already installed it for me, but on your first install, it's gonna ask you to sign into your GitHub account. Once you're signed into your account, you're gonna wanna subscribe to one of the plans. You can pick the individual plan, which starts at $10 a month. Once you have this, we can head back over to our coding window. We'll delete the extension view here, and now we can start coding. And what we're gonna do for our first example is I'm gonna build a little simple web scraper. I'll name it tag scrape.py. And now as soon as I type in this new file here, we get this prompt here at the top. Press control I to ask GitHub Copilot chat to do something. And we'll do just that. Control I, it'll bring up this little box here and we can just type in what you want. Say build me a web scraper that prints the H1, H2, and H3 tags of any website URL. All right, sweet. So after a couple seconds here, you can see it typed in 27 lines of code here and we can either choose to accept or discard this code you can see we have some imports here it defines a function here to scrape the url it goes through goes to the url and then finds the h1 h2 h3 tags and then prints those tags and then we can just pop in our url right here so yeah sure let's let's go with it we'll click on accept here what we'll do is i'll come on over to apple.com here and i'll use this url as our example so i'll just pop this baby in here and we are using python to make sure you have Python installed. So now if we run this code, oh no, I get an error. So what we can do now is we'll test out the new other feature, GitHub Copilot Chat. So you'll notice on the left-hand side here, we have this new chat box here. It brings us to a GitHub Copilot Chat window. It's just like ChatGPT. It's just directly inside of your IDE. So you don't have to switch between tabs. It's all right there. What we can do is I'll take this error right here, control C, paste this in here, and I'll type this in, and then let's see what it gives us. So it tells us the error message is to BS4 and it says pip install BS4. Perfect. So now we need to just copy this over. We'll install it like so and we'll wait a second and installs the packages. 
Now, if I were to say this again and run it, there we go. We can see it scraped all of the headers from the Apple website here. If we want to compare it, we have like the Vision Pro right there, or the iPhone 15, and even the headers down here. If we have any errors, what we can do is just pop them right into our chat window right next to us and get feedback for whatever we need. But let's keep going here. Let's say I also want to grab some more tags. Let's say I want to also grab the H4 tags. If I hit enter here and I type in H4, you'll notice it already kind of auto populates exactly what I want. I don't have to type anything more than that. It already understands what I'm looking for and I can just click on tab and then it automatically puts that in for us, which is huge. I love this feature. So let's say we have print the text content for each tag. What if you want to simplify this? What we can do here is we'll just highlight all of this and then we'll click on control I and then we'll say simplify this. And then what it should do here is it tells us what lines it's using and what lines it's going to change. It also recognized we're using the H4 tag here as well. And we'll click on accept. And so now we have something even simpler, which just prints all of the tags in this little array here, which is super nice. So if we save this and click run again, you'll see it does the same thing. Now, I don't think there's actually any H4 tags on the Apple website. Actually, there is. There's a couple ones here. We can see that were added from this one here. And we can even take this one step further. If I were to control a this control I again and then we'll just say say I need you to print all the text on the page and let's see what it does so it looks like it gets the response URL and then gets the text and then also prints the text let's just see what happens here so it looks like well that's not what we want we'll highlight this section here we'll hit control I we'll say can you print all the text on the page and let's see what it gives us so it changes some things around we can either accept or discard or if we wanted to run again we can also click on that button and see what it gives us. So it gave us a different text where it prints the tags and then also prints all the text. We'll go with that, we'll click on accept and then we'll run this and see what we get. And we get all the text on the page. Look at that here. Kind of hard to see in the terminal, but you can definitely see it. And even all the little, and even all the return spaces in between. Pretty sweet. Let's do a little bit of a different project here to kind of showcase this a bit more. I'll make a new file called test website HTML. What we're gonna want for this is if we come into our extensions tab and we'll type in and live, we're gonna need this live server extension here. And once you have that installed, we can come back to our Explorer, we can right click and then open in live server. And now we'll be able to view what's in our website HTML. So what I'll do here is I'll just say, I'll say, make me a simple fun website. And it will come in here and it will literally do the bare minimum and give us a fun website. We'll say, say make this website more fun. Oh, it adds some styles in there and then adds an image. Look at that, sure. We'll go with it for now. So if I were to save this and then head on over to my fun website that we opened with our live server, we have welcome to my fun website. Enjoy your time here and have some fun. Just something real simple. Who knows? We'll copy this over and I'll paste it in a new chat window. So we can come up here and we can make a new chat window. We can even come through and we can pick some of the pre-made prompts for us if we wanted to fix problems, explain how the code works, kind of self-explanatory. Also, if we want to see some of our past logs, we can click on this little clock here and we can see all of our old chats here with some of our old projects, but I'll make a new one. And this last button here is if we have any issues, it'll bring us to the GitHub issues tab, but we'll make a new window. I'll paste this in and we'll say, we'll say, can you use the official joke API to add a button and display a joke every time it's clicked? So it kind of goes through similar to chat GPT and then spits out exactly what we want and gives us some new code. We'll copy this over. I'll paste that back in here and let's give this a shot. So now we have a new button here. If you click on get a joke. What happens to a frog's car when it breaks down? It gets towed away. Classic. What did the shy pebble wish for? That she was a little bit bolder. That's pretty clever. These are actually not too bad. We get the idea and we can do some fun things here directly inside of our code. Let's say I'll control A, control I, and I'll say make this pop in font. So if I want the entire thing to be in a new font, I can type that in and it will use the pop in family and then also add in the Google fonts link here for us. It's all I had to do is just say make this pop in font. We'll click on accept, control S. Now, if we head over, the fonts change. This is just the font that I use for all my thumbnails, titles, and things like that. I really like this font. Yeah, so now even if we were to do this, new jokes are now in the Poppins font as well. Very cool. But let's say we wanna change some colors and we don't wanna have to go through and figure out, you know, 
what numbers and letters that we have to put in here to get this to be a different color. Although we can pick from right here. We can highlight this, control I, and then say, make this light blue. And it will go through and change the color to light blue. Look at that right there. Didn't have to even really do anything. What if we take this whole thing and then we'll say, we'll say, make it look neater, add a header with a nav bar, an emoji icon, and a footer with some text and pages. Goes through, looks like it adds some more context, adds a header and adds a footer. All right, we'll go with this. We'll click on accept, we'll save it. Look at that, baby. My fun website <laughs> to get the joke. Adds a little footer here. That's pretty sweet. Even add a little star icon here at the top. Very cute. Maybe I wanna add some pages to my header here. So we can just select on the header, control I again, and then we'll say, we'll say add some pages to the header and move the icon to the left. And we'll see what it does here. This will be interesting. Okay, so it adds in the pages and puts the icon on the left. So if I were to save this, look at that. So we, it puts the text in the middle, the icon on the left, these on the right here. Let's do this one more time and we'll say, say, can you move the header text to the left with the icon? And it changes up the styles here, margin left with some justify content. Okay, perfect. So if we, oh God, let's try Let's try using the chat box window. So I'll make a new chat box and then we'll say, we'll say, can you move the icon to the left with the header text on the left and then the nav pages on the right. So yeah, we could basically use either this or what I've been showing you here to modify the text. You can even come through here and maybe add another page if we want. Let's see if it kind of fills it in for us. Look at that, testwebsite.html for a test website. Let's see if we were to do like an H2, if it would give us some, oh, look at that. I didn't have to do anything. I literally just clicked the next button. This is a fun website that I made to practice my HTML, CSS, and JavaScript skills. Sweet, we'll just throw that in there, add some more content. Let's see what it changed. Create a new div with class bar left. Ooh, okay, so we'll do this. We'll do all of this. Put that in there. I'll do another A. Look at that. So if I just type in A href, we can then just hit tab and then I'll give us our new little test website here. Oh, we gotta remove the tag here. There we go. So now if we check on our new website here, look at that. We got this on the left. We got another icon here, some more P text. Click on the button, get some jokes. What do you get when you cross a chicken with a skunk? A foul smell. That's fun. Nice little fun project built out with very minimal brain power, all using GitHub Copilot and the new chat feature. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Also, let me know what kinds of things you want me to build. Personally, I've been loving GitHub Copilot chat, and I've really been using it more so than ChatGPT lately. So in my future videos, I'm probably going to be using this over ChatGPT to make some of my coding projects. If you have any ideas for things you want me to build or automate, please leave them down in the comments below. I'm always looking for more good video ideas. Also, if you want to work with me to automate or build any kind of AI systems for your business, feel free to book a 15-minute call down in the description below with me and we could talk about all that stuff there. But now I want you to go check out this video where I put together a new Google Maps web scraper all built with AI doing the exact same thing I showed you in this video with very little coding knowledge. So I'll see you guys over in that video.